Jeezy filed paperwork on Thursday, November 30th, 2023 regarding child custody issues with his estranged wife, Jeannie Mai. Jeezy accused Jeannie of gatekeeping access to their one-year-old daughter. Translation, when Jeezy is supposed to have the baby, Jeannie is playing games. She's showing her true colors more and more, and now he's trying to get a judge to establish custody temporarily while they fight in court over this divorce for this two-year marriage. I do have the paperwork here, and we're about to dive into it, but first, take a second to make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and click the notification bell for all updates. Jeezy filed for divorce from Jeannie Mai, his wife of two years, just a couple of months ago, and things are already getting messy. Here's the motion that Jeezy filed. As you can see here, the foul date November 30th, 2023. So the petitioner of this motion is J. Wayne Jenkins, that's Jeezy. The statement of facts, the parties were married on or about March 27th, 2021, and have one minor child born as issue of this marriage. That's a female child born in 2021. Petitioner filed his complaint for divorce and other relief on September 14th, 2023. Since soon after the filing of petitioner's complaint for divorce, respondent, that will be Jeannie, has been temporarily residing with a child in the party's home in Los Angeles, California. One, I'm convinced the attorney did not write this. They could have at least reviewed this. And two, although marrying this woman and getting her pregnant was the first mistake, one thing he did write was file for divorce in Georgia. He's established in Cali and Georgia. However, I believe Jeezy has a better chance of getting a more favorable ruling out of Georgia versus California. It says, since that time, the parties have endeavored to address temporary custodial arrangements on an informal basis. While the parties have agreed upon a visitation schedule through the end of 2023, which has been confirmed via communications between their counsel to continue addressing custodial and parenting time issues in such an ad hoc matter, it's becoming increasingly less feasible. The lack of consistency, continuity, and stability inherently associated with such a haphazard and fluid parenting time schedule is stressful to the child. And the lawyers wrote here that the lack of a real schedule is created unnecessary tension and confusion regarding not only parenting time, but also in regard to each parent's role and rights when the child is in their respective custody. Right here is saying that Jeezy does not believe that Jeannie is acting maliciously. And he also said that he didn't believe that she was trying to harm his relationship with their child but if you look right here it says the fact is respondent has acted as a gatekeeper when it comes to respondent exercising parenting time with the child as well as in regard to respondent's parenting rights and that's a child's father and once again another mistake there i don't understand why the attorney didn't proofread this they meant petitioner but they wrote respondent how are they fumbling like this Respondents interference with petitioner's relationship with the child again, while not generated from or with malicious intent, is nevertheless causing confusion and tension between the parties and is working to stifle the development of petitioner's relationship with the child. As such, it is necessary at this point to separate, structure, and clearly define the party's temporary legal and physical custody rights and set a parenting time schedule consistent with the best interest of the child. OMG, if she's working to stifle Jeezy's relationship with the child, why is the attorney going out the way to say, oh yeah, she's gatekeeping the relationship, she's stifling the relationship, but no, she's not a bad person, she's not doing it maliciously. Newsflash attorney, she is doing it maliciously, Jeezy is aware of this, and you as the attorney trying to play softball and tiptoe around this is not in the best interest of your client. And this is how men lose all the time. Their attorneys are always playing softball and checkers while the women come in with their attorneys playing hardball and chess. This woman is obviously bitter. She's trying to control the relationship and minimize his influence, but you better believe she want all of his influence when it's time to talk about how much of his money should go to her bank account. This is what they do all the time. And I'm telling you, Kanthu Keisha here is no different. Now back to this paperwork these people didn't proofread. They wrote, as such, petitioner respectfully submits that it is necessary and appropriate for the court to hold a hearing to address the temporary legal and physical custody arrangements in this matter and enter a temporary order in accordance with the best interests of the child, which will serve to protect the child's welfare, reduce strife between the parties, and help move this case to a final resolution. 
And right here in this paragraph, they're just saying the court has the authority to modify its temporary custody and parenting time orders at any time until the entry of the final decree of divorce. So while Jeannie is trying to push Jeezy out, Jeezy is trying to make sure that everything is fair so both of them can have a relationship with their daughter, not just Jeannie and her mom and her family. It says, in light of the present long distance nature of the party's co-parenting of the child and associated difficulties, including the need for each parent to exercise their parental roles without interference when they have the child, petitioner respectfully submits that it is crucial for the court to enter a temporary order establishing the party's temporary legal and physical custodial arrangements during the pendency of this case. What it also sounds like is whenever Jeezy is supposed to get the baby, you have Jeannie messing things up by trying to make it seem like it's her baby, like the baby only belongs to her, as if Jeezy doesn't have any rights. So Jeezy is like, Judge, I want you to step in and put it on the record. He's got control over this child as well, because Jeannie not understanding these boundaries is creating arguments between the two of them. In summary, as you can see right here on the screen, Jeezy is asking the court to grant his motion for a temporary hearing. He's asking for Jeannie to have to appear and show a cause as to why a temporary custody agreement can't be made. And Jeezy is asking for the judge to grant any other relief that they deem necessary. And the final page here is simply the certificate of service showing that Jeannie was served via her attorney on record. Jeezy is trying to get everything on paper. And when you're dealing with somebody who's trying to be complicated, that's the best thing to do. This informal stuff, it's not going to work. That's Jeezy's paperwork. He's trying to get that temporary custody order because Jeannie is bitter and playing games using their baby. He filed that at 2.51 p.m. And an hour and a half later, Jeannie's attorney filed an answer in a counterclaim for divorce at 4.21 p.m. You can see both timestamps here. And yes, they do have a prenup agreement, but Jeannie is trying to get more money out of Jeezy by saying he broke an infidelity clause that was in the agreement. Side note, the big blocks, they all picked up on this. They are promoting and taking part in this heist. Yeah, that's what I call it. Jeannie is playing this game and they are all in on it with her. They're not talking about Jeannie keeping Jeezy away from his baby and playing custody games, but they're all running to report this. <laughs> This is how the media works. Traditional media, the blogs, social media, this is what they do. Now here's the part that's making its way around. In Jeannie's counterclaim, it says, why further shows that the court should enforce paragraph eight of the prenuptial agreement regarding infidelity, which provides in pertinent part that in the event that either party engages in relations, an emotional relationship, or is emotionally or inappropriately suggestive in communication with a third party via all forms of electronic communications, including but not limited to texting, FaceTiming, social media, and or direct messages shall result in a significant financial penalty upon the adulterous party. The crazy part about this is all these women running around talking about cheating all the time. Well, I guarantee most of them will be guilty of cheating if this was a definition that we all went by. Look how loose it is. Basically, every communication with anybody can somehow be categorized as cheating. So yeah, this is all a joke, but it's real. And now she's trying to run his pockets. Before she was talking about how she was so hurt and shocked and blindsided how she wanted to work on her marriage if he did any or all of that she would have been the one to file on him but the gag is that's the reason why she's really mad because he filed first because if left up to her she would have filed in california only been married to this man for a little minute two years and she's trying to figure out a way to get a big payday and this is why men can never believe these chameleons they will say whatever until they get what they want and when they get you, they expect for you to stay with them until they're ready to leave you and take you to the cleaners or until you leave on your own and they'll still take you to the cleaners. Either way, you're going to the cleaners. So I hope you like heavy starch because that's what you're gonna deal with. And almost every man that finds himself in this situation, no matter how much money he has, you have an overwhelming majority of them that ignore the red flags. Well, let me tell you about Jeannie Mai. She's been a card-carrying feminist. She's been very trashy, very, very trashy. Her ex-husband, Freddie, told you that, but no one believed him because they thought somehow he was jealous of Jeannie's new relationship with Jeezy at the time. But Jeannie's mindset is really trash. Her attitude is trash. Her mama is trash too. And that's where she learned all that trash behavior from. 
her mama admitted to being horrible to her father. Her dad couldn't take her mom's attitude, so he divorced her. It's the same reason why Freddie divorced Jeannie and why Jeezy is divorcing Jeannie now too. Oh yeah, and I can't forget about Jeezy's mama. It's the same reason why Jeezy's daddy divorced his mama. She had a very nasty attitude, just like Jeannie's mom had a very nasty attitude. But there is a difference between Jeannie's divorce with Freddie and Jeannie's divorce with Jeezy. Outside of money, because you know Jeannie had to pay Freddie alimony, and she complained about it on her job at the daytime talk show. Yeah, the independent strong boss chick was so salty about having to pay the bill that she had to tell everybody on the reel. By the way, that's one show I'm happy that's going. But yeah, another difference between the divorce with Freddie versus Jeezy is that there were no kids involved with Jeannie and Freddie's divorce. But now with Jeezy, Jeannie's got this baby out of him and she's dangling that child over his head like your usual bitter woman. Jeannie is supposed to be so happy and so successful, gainfully employed, yet she's using this baby as a pawn. And I have to be honest, Jeezy, along with everybody else who cheered this on, ignored the red flags. Because anybody who watched The Real, you already knew this woman's mindset, her opinion on that show. Jeannie is very outspoken, very opinionated, so it's not like she never revealed her number. She did it over and over and over again. That's how I know Jeannie is a stumped down feminist. And you're not going to get a submissive wife from a feminist. When you think back on it, she lied on that show when she said that she wanted to be a submissive wife she said that before he married her. So the actual definition of submit is to accept or yield to a superior force or to the authority or will of another person. So I'm going to say right here that I, Jeannie Mai, going into my marriage, I want to submit to my man. The lady said, I want to submit to my man. She didn't say she was going to do it. I want to submit to my man. I want to. She didn't say she was going to, and she wasn't even thinking on that level consciously. But the true her was there the whole time. It wouldn't even allow her to utter the words that she would be submissive. She said, I want to. But the rebella inside of her knew that she was not going to be a submissive wife. She was going to be the same woman that she was to Freddie. The woman with the bad temper, the woman who wanted to be in control, the woman who wanted to be the boss. Those same attributes she got from her mama. And after she was pregnant by him, after she was walking down that aisle, she started showing herself to Jeezy. This is why you don't rush into marriage or making babies. Jeannie was in a rush. She was over 40 years old. She wanted to hurry up and have a baby. Never mind, she was in a 10 year marriage with Freddie and refused to have his baby. We all know why. It's because Freddie didn't have enough money. You see, if Freddie divorced her and they had a baby, Freddie would have went before the judge and got custody of that baby. Then Jeannie would have been paying him alimony and child support. She would have been out here looking like Britney Spears dancing around in some pull ups. Let's go ahead and get the conversation started below in the comments. Sounds like Jeannie is bitter, she's trying to use his baby as a pawn, and she's trying to finesse more money out of Jeezy. Let me know what you think about all of this. Special thank you to Edmund. I appreciate you, Edmund, for all of your support for the channel, as well as our brother Randy. And shout out to my sisters always showing support, Tiffany B and Tanette. Don't forget that you can support this channel as well. Links to Cash App and PayPal are below. Ladies, fellas, want a balance analysis? Want the truth from a woman's perspective? Then you're going to want to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to like and share.